Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. We straight gangsters over here, Drake man. Gangsters. Uh. 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 Yeah. yeah, good morning. It is a beautiful Tuesday morning. It is November 27th, and you are listening to Scout Team Sports. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. And all of that is true. And the man on the other microphone, he is the greatest patriot that we have ever known. Even greater patriot than Tom Brady, and that would be... America, America. Yeah, it's your boy Chris America coming to you live this Tuesday morning, November the 27th, 2018. Loudbeard, we are down to just three more days in November, and then it's December, brother. And before you know it, it'll be 2025. It, it happens in the blink of an eye before you know it. The years just fly by. Us old men, you know, we go back and we say, back in the day, back in the in good day. old days, when I was young, time used to stand still. But now that we're old, it flies by. And today is another day where we're getting some flying by. Flying by like Flying Brian. <laughs> flying, flying Brian, one of my favorite WWE wrestlers. Yes. Or was he WCW? I mean... Yeah, he was WCW. I don't know. You're right. I mean, WWE owns them now, so he's basically a WWE wrestler. Yeah, I miss WCW. So I miss it. Oh, no, my God. He... Whoa. It's the Golden Ghost. Like, wow, guys. You guys are so, like, oh. That's what you talk about first thing in the morning. Hold wrestling? on. I like how he comes what's, in. What's like, wrong with you? Hey, guys. You're so boring. This is like so boring. This is you guys are so the boring. Golden Ghost I'm coming thing I've ever heard, heard in my whole you life. That you guys are so boring. Play right, the tell intro. us something exciting. No, you have to tell me that something exciting for live. me to play your intro. The Golden Ghost is live today. That's exciting. That's exciting enough. Play the intro, man. Hey, I'm just here so I won't get fined. Hey, Thank I'm just you. Here so I won't get fined. It's the Golden Ghost coming at you live on this Tuesday morning. What's going on, you clowns? I miss you. Ah, oh, welcome aboard, clown. We love you having you on in the mornings. <laughs> Glad you're here. Absolutely. What's going welcome on? Welcome to the circus. Man, there's not it's... much going on. We had a big Monday night football game last night. You you catch that one? We got the Titans versus the Texans AFC matchup, possible playoff implications on the line. Big matchup. You catch this one, Mac, the Golden Ghost? No. I was busy <laughs> drinking Coquito. Uh, okay. I'm okay <laughs> you know with you that. Can, you know Good you can answer. watch football and drink drink Coquito at the same time. Not when you drink as much as I do. In fact, well, that's I'm one gonna... of my favorite pastimes is watching football and drinking alcohol. <laughs> it makes it, it so much better. It really does. Eh, it works. I'm going to spoil it for you, Mac. I'm gonna, or Golden Ghost. I got to remember, you're the Golden Ghost. I'm going to spoil it for what? you. The Texans win. They get their eighth straight yeah, I know win. Who won. Check 34 it. to 17. Do you? Do you? Uh, yes, I know who won. Now, I have a question for you. Is Deshaun Watson officially back? I mean, yes. Yes, right? Like, you can't deny it, right? I mean, I was skeptical at the beginning of the season. People come back from injuries, they have a. Uh, you know, they have different disabilities, but he has shown no vulnerabilities. He's he's Superman, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he's the black Superman. <laughs> I thought you always say Superman is black. I mean, I have to be politically correct with you guys every once in a while. So, yeah. All right. He's back. I like it. So Did you guys go away? No, I'm here. You're here? You can hear me? You can I'm hear here. me now? I'm here. Can you I hear can me now? Hear you. Uh, hey, hey, hey. So if Deshaun Watson is back, oh, go ahead, Chris America. No, no, I was going to say, we talked about how the Chargers were quietly 8-3. and three. The Houston Texans 
are very quiet, eight and three, and they made a loud statement. Yes, it was very against the quiet. Titans, but the Titans were they were the next uh, best team in their division. The t- Titans had been rattling off some wins lately. Uh, they're now five and six, but eight and three. Houston sitting at, and you you guys are right. Deshaun Watson is playing at his top ability, his top level. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Their defense is one of the best defenses in the league. And if you look through their schedule, they've won in every possible way. They've won close games in overtime. They've won defensive battles. They've won offensive battles. This could be one of those, you know, I don't want to compare them to the Jaguars, but kind of that team that nobody talks about going into the playoffs. And then next thing you know, they're in the AFC Championship challenging, you know, the Patriots or the Steelers or the Kansas City Chiefs for that AFC title game. I think they're better than the Jaguars were last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. I only, didn't really it, mean comparing it, them, like, who's better yeah. or worse. I'm just saying that team that nobody really saw coming. I don't think anybody saw the Jaguars coming last year, making it to the AFC Championship. I don't think anybody has Houston on their radar. Like, when I hear people say, what are your AFC Championship game picks, it's always the same boring Patriots versus Steelers, Patriots versus Chiefs, Chiefs versus Steelers. It's never the Houston Texans. So I, I can see the Houston Texans now being one of those teams in the AFC Championship game. Well, the AFC Like you say, they're heavy quiet. Too. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're really tiny. quiet. So they're top-heavy. You got the Chiefs sitting there at the top at 9-2, and two, but you got the Patriots at 8-3, and three, you've got the Texans at 8-3, and three, you've got the Chargers at 8-3, and three, and the Pittsburgh Steelers at 7-3. and three. So your top five teams in the AFC are all really great teams. So you're going to see an exciting playoff come time with the AFC and that six spot that is up for grabs for a number of teams that could be sitting there. But looking at it, you know that you're going to see at least the top five teams are going to all be electric coming out of the AFC and the Texans could be sneaky. Good. They could be sneaky. Good. And uh, you're right. They're under the radar. Nobody's talking about them. Great defense. Last night, Lamar Miller busts off a 97 yard touchdown run and when you have a great running great game and you have a great defense and you have a quarterback that is mobile who makes plays with his legs and he can throw it to De- DeAndre Hopkins who to me is one of the best wide receivers in the league that team they really have a full package there's not a lot of weaknesses on this team check out their remaining schedule they have the Browns the Colts the Jets Eagles and the and the Jaguars, they can very well win out. That yeah, rest they can of roll season. into the playoffs at thirteen and three, which is very very impressive. Yeah, very impressive uh, for Deshaun Watson and the Texans. I'm rooting for them. I, I like Deshaun Watson. I like the Texans. I, I hope they make some noise. I hope they go deep in the playoffs. I still think it's Chiefs or New England's to lose, but they could they could they could sneak up and surprise a couple of people. Maybe second round. Uh, I'm not going to say uh, AFC Championship yet, but definitely get to the second round. Well, I mean, if they win their division, they'll have home field advantage at least for the first round of the playoffs. If they go 13-3, and three, they could very well be right. the, the number one overall seed. They could have home field advantage all the way through. So, I mean, that helps them out. They, they, I, what, I don't have to go to cold, cold New England to go play? I don't have to go to cold mm. Arrowhead? We can stay in the comfortness of our... Of our dome stadium, yeah, that works out mm. great for them. Well, let's check out the Patriots' uh, last couple of games. They got the Vikings, yep, the Dolphins, that could be a loss. That's a win. The Steelers, that could be a loss. The Bills, mm, and the win. Jets. Okay, so they could mm. they could drop two out of those. I mean, even what, if they drop Ste- one. Who, who you got? Steelers and Dolphins, or Steelers and Vikings? Oh, Steelers, no, no, no. And Vikings. Steelers and Vikings. Come on. <laughs> Not the Steelers. Dolphins. Yeah, Wait, is, I'm this, like, what are you talking about? Is this about? Dolphins game in Miami? <laughs> Come on. Well, is this man. Dolphins game it in is, Miami? It absolutely is in Miami. Okay, well, then the, the Patriots can lose that game. For whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but the Patriots <laughs> always lose in Miami. Look it, look it up, man. I'm, I'm telling you, they go out and they get – they go out to clubs and they, they're like, hey, we're in South Beach in December. <laughs> it's nice out. Let's go, to the, let's go to the rooftop club that they got there until 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I guess so. You can't, do that in Boston. you can't do that in Boston this time of year. Can't do that in Boston. No, definitely not. So, yeah, Although, they, they could absolutely lose two or three of those games probably. Guys, yeah. we're on we're on Defcon, we're on Defcon 2 right now. It's going to be below 50 the next 2 days here in Florida. 
Mm. But it's nice out though. I mean, even below fifty, the sun's gonna be shining. Like long as the sun's shining, we're good. We're great. Yes. Doesn't matter. For an an FSU fan, I appreciate that kind of optimism. Yes, the sun will come out tomorrow. (laughs) Why you gotta go there? Why you gotta go there, man? Just relax. It's been five years, bro. It's been five years. You got your backpack picked out yet? (sighs) Hey, I've got got a a turn your back for your legs. Yeah, that is the backpack bet. I've got a turnover back. Hey, at least I ain't got to shave my hair, though. You don't know that. Mm. We got one more game. One more game. Let it let it ride. Yeah, you're not going to cover that spread, man. I think it's like an 800-yard deficit. No, Michigan let me down by letting Ohio State score 62 points. That was supposed to be like a 17-3 <laughs> to three slobber knocker, but instead that Michigan defense just disappeared on us. Yeah, so that was wild. I don't think they I don't think they're covering that spread, man. I'm, yeah, I'm I've already I've already started looking for beanies online so I can wear because <laughs> I don't know if you guys have had a shaved head in cold weather, but it's not fun. It is amazing how much heat your hair retains. But when I was in the Coast Guard stationed up in Boston and Maine, you have that short, short hair, that military haircut. It's cold. You need that beanie. Yeah. I'm yeah. half bald. It's, I, I know when the air cold. hits the, yeah, the bald spot, it hurts. I'm sitting here talking <laughs> to the one bald guy on the bit. show. Like he does. Wait, that. did he say he's half don't bald? Act like, yeah, we don't know. We know. Loudbeard, um, I haven't seen you in two weeks, so I kind of forget. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, so our listeners know you guys do have a bet it's on the line. This has been going on all year long. And right now, the Golden Ghost has a little bit of an edge, but the bet, and you guys can clarify here, was. UCF would be a top five offense, and they're sitting there at number six or seven right now. Is that is that correct? Yes. But I, I think I they think fell scoring, to seven, right? I think scoring or or total yards, whichever one gets me into the top five. Okay, so we will go oh, ahead and, and be flexible. As long as one that? of them's in the top five, we never really yes, clarified. We never really clarified if we it's total really. offense, scoring offense. I feel like never. you were so confident in your they won't be top five. Yeah, you thought there would be well, like fiftieth. You, 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 you were yeah, waiting you for the. You thought Florida State's going to obviously be one out of the top five. You were waiting for Calm UCF down. for the bottom to fall out. You were waiting for the to fall out. You're like new coach. No, I was be as not. Good. They're awful. I was not. I did not say they were awful. Calm down, you guys. I said they like, wouldn't be top five. I didn't we, say they stop. They wouldn't be top twenty. Week one, you were like, Calm oh, down. they're going to score like twenty one points on UConn. I didn't say that. What yeah, I think your, I think your you prediction guys? was like a twenty-four to twenty-one game. We'll We're gonna have to go, have to go back and get the recording. But it was definitely below 30, 30 points. I hate both of you. <laughs> hey, look. Either way, they're not covering that spread. I'm keeping my hair. I might have to wear a backpack and what was it? Shave my legs? I think. Shave your legs. Yeah. Get your nails. Yeah, ready. I might have to wear a backpack and shave my legs, but I can wear pants and the backpack. Psh, I wear backpacks all the time. I wear I wear my daughter's backpacks all the time, so I'm not, I'm fine. I don't have a problem with it. It'll all be right. Right. we we swerved way off of uh, the Houston Texans, but uh, we're <laughs> we're I think we're all on board for the Houston Texans. I think we're buying into the what the Houston Texans are selling. Yeah, Texans yes. are 100 percent legit, and they are going to make some noise in the AFC. A team that is not going to make noise. And has not made any noise this year, surprisingly, is our Jacksonville Jaguars. They have been uh, in That's the news a lot lately. Now, there's a couple couple things I want to get into here. Jags fire their offense co- offensive coordinator, coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett. Now, is he the it's fall guy? Fault. Well, I mean, He's the fall guy, if, but it's not his fault. If you can't hack it, then you need to go. Didn't. Uh, now, they, they, <laughs> they're doing the unthinkable and they are benching Blake Bortles. They have named Cody Kessler as the starting quarterback for their upcoming game. Hashtag Your Honor, in other, that is own balls. in other words, we're just throwing stuff against the wall. We're yeah. just doing something like, different. Yeah, Seriously. and you have to. Hey, didn't they give Blake Bortles like extra money in an extension last season? Like did. a one. It was. It, it wasn't like a huge. It extension. wasn't an extent. It was kind of like one of those. They had a player. They had a team option to sign him to, and that they signed it. Basically, it wasn't Ooh. Kirk Cousins' top five money. No, I mean they're basically paying him nineteen yeah. million dollars, which seems like a lot, but in today's NFL, that's probably good for like fifteenth. I mean, it's right good around where Blake, Blake Bortles, Bortles is at. That's right around where Blake Bortles is at. The fifteenth best quarterback in the league. 
But you have to you have to do some of these moves when you lose to the Buffalo Bills. Is that the barometer? Like, if you lose to anybody, it's the Bills, and that's when yes. you have to blow the whole thing up. Yes, of course. And you can't I don't... lose to one of the worst teams. But they had Josh Allen back. Am I, am I correct well, on that? Well, they are yeah, one of the worst teams. So You are absolutely correct. They had Josh Allen back. The Bills actually looked pretty decent. I caught some of this game because the local games in Central Florida are the Tampa Bay Bucks, the Miami Dolphins, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, Sometimes I just want to jump that, off a cliff. Imagine living in that hell, America. <laughs> yes. Okay? It is it We is get awful. nice weather, but we also have to deal with that, okay? It, it so, is yes, not pretty. Football. It is not pretty. So I watched this Jaguars-Bills game, and there was a, a pretty good scrum at, at one point in this game. Dante Moncrief went up to catch the ball in the, in the end zone. The defensive player had it at the same time, so they were kind of like both holding onto it on the ground. Players started trying to separate him, and then they all started fighting. Well, Leonard Fournette, who has been hurt and has been a key piece that the Jaguars have been missing all year long, he ends up starting throwing punches and, and just getting all into this, and him and Shaq Lawson, the defensive player for the Buffalo Bills, are just going at it, and... One thing is, I think fights are back in the NFL and in college football. Every week now, I'm seeing these huge brawls. So fights are back. And the other thing is, the Jaguars, they need Leonard Fournette. As soon as he le left the game after getting thrown out, their offense couldn't do anything. They need Leonard Fournette. Carlos Hyde was not the answer when they brought him in. TJ Yeldon's a good complimentary back. They need him as a bruiser, and he cannot stay on the field. And now he's suspended for the next game. Basically killing the Jaguars. It's going to hurt Cody Kessler in this next start. But two things there. Leonard Fournette, can you believe this? And two, wait, our fight's wait. back. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say those running backs are going to hurt Cody Kessler and not Cody Kessler hurting Cody Kessler? Yeah, I did say that. Hey, give the guy a <laughs> chance. Give the guy a chance. He's, okay. he's got a, a big shoes to fill. When you have to step in for one from one of the greatest – and Blake Bortles Come the boat, then you have to be able to have some support. And he's not going to have any support. Bro, just, nah. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to have any support, but he's still Kessler. Like, that's like saying, you know, Iron Man is going to lose the fight because he doesn't have a suit. Well, yeah, no, duh. He doesn't have a suit. K Cody Kessler is Kessler. He'll be all right. It, Did you just compare Cody Kessler to Iron Man? Huh. I say That's he's going to lose the fight because he doesn't comparison. have a suit. Yeah, of course he's going to lose the fight because he doesn't have a suit. Ke Cody Kessler. What if he brings Kessler. his Iron Man suit? Is he going to be the best quarterback in the league? Hmm. I mean, if he has an Iron Man suit, it might work out for him. But if he doesn't, he's just going to be Cody Kessler, you know, and he's going to do I what like Kessler a better, does. A better comparison would be Cody Kessler compared to Quail Man. <laughs> He's basically yes. Doug Funny with a belt on his head. Yep. <laughs> that, you nailed it. Nailed oh, it. Man. Right out of the park. Boom. Man. There is not a 90s reference I cannot Home put <laughs> the sports. Quail Man. Wow. Bro. Yeah, that's out there. Hey, but good, though. He, he, he's Ryan Fitzpatrick without the glitz and glamour. Mm, no, nobody's Fitzpatrick. Come on. Nobody is that good. Uh, so He's another what? <laughs> another okay. quarterback who is out. You look at Blake Bortles being great. Another quarterback in the league that is now going to be out for the year. The Bengals, Andy Dalton, placed on IR, done for the season. The Bengals were right there on the cusp of that playoff picture, and now it looks like they are going to have to throw in the towel. Without Andy Dalton, A.J. Green's been hurt. And losing a huge game to the Browns, Bengals are done, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. You lose to the yeah. Browns, yeah, you're done. You're, you're finished. Hey, the Browns there's, have there's the no exact way. same record as your Green Bay Packers, by the way. Dude, don't, uh, don't, don't be disparaging hashtag, the Cleveland Browns. Hashtag fire McCarthy. I don't uh, – dude, I know. We suck. And there's no other excuse about it, man. We are horrible. We're garbage. Fire McCarthy. It's been a bad football year for me. Just horrible. This is a bad Ice football teams. year for you, but well, are you not putting enough on Aaron Rodgers? Because I don't think Aaron Rodgers has performed up to what he should perform as. He away their away games. I think they've lost nine out of their last ten away games. And as an, a superstar quarterback, 
you're going to have to carry your team in one of these games. He has not been able to do that. He's carried us for the last four seasons by himself with running back by committees and a coach that has been subpar. I, I, I blame him, but I also blame the circumstances around him. Like, you can't keep carrying the team. Like, Year in and year out, game in, game out, you can't put that on your shoulders and expect to be successful. One man, one man, one man, that's it. Running backs are non-existent. Wide receivers come and go. He's just the one. We we always say, hey, what, what, what we did on offense? I don't know. What did Aaron Rodgers do on offense? Because that's all we have. I can't put all the onus on him. He has to have a great supporting cast, or at least a decent supporting cast. Right now, we're just, it's all catching up to us. It should, and we should get rid of McCarthy at the end of the season. Well, it's funny. We should, guys- get, we should get rid of him now. I mean, he's not helping us. Get rid of him now and start the search. Either way, something needs to happen dramatically. Or, I hate to say it, you guys are right. We're going to lose Aaron Rodgers. Well, I mean, he's already signed up. He already made the mistake of committing for pretty much the rest of his career to a team that, for right now, oh, doesn't no, know right. how to build a team him. around him. Yeah. But uh, this, Hopefully this, brought up an interesting, this brought up an interesting topic in my mind that I was uh, noticing this year. Uh, if I told you guys, if I gave you guys Eli Manning and Aaron Rodgers and told you one was having one of their best statistical seasons mm. of the of their career – and the other was having one of their worst statistical seasons of their career. Who would you say, w- what peg would you put into which hole? <sighs> it Lappard? would be Aaron Rodgers for having the best, but I know it isn't. So it's, no, I mean, it's the opposite. He, based on how Aaron Rodgers has played this year, I would say it's his worst statistical season. Um, Eli, I didn't think this was his best, but maybe it is. Yeah, he's he's on pace to have like more touchdowns, more completions, more yards, and fewer interceptions than he's had in his whole career. Which is and it's they still crazy suck. To think. Yeah, well, it <laughs> takes more than having a good quarterback. It takes more. Yeah, and that's that's the point I'm getting to. We, we we need more. I mean, hell, I don't know how Eli. I mean, Eli got Saquon Barkley. Is what he's doing? Dumping runs or something? What? Oh, hell? a lot of those. Oh, man, have I racked up so many fantasy points off of uh, PPR on Saquon Barkley, man. Having him and like, Christian McCaffrey on the same fantasy football team has been a fantastic year for me. Dump and runs. Hey, Always living Eli Manning. The man. Dump and run. The Giants, baby. Three and eight. Also, three my strategy eight. when running a marathon. I would have never guessed that the Giants would be three and eight this season. I thought they had, I thought they had everything running. I heard that. It's just weird, man. I love you, though. Funny because it's guess. true. Funny because it's true. <laughs> All right. So speaking of great quarterbacks in the NFL, there is like another great quarterback that stepped up, just like Eli Manning. <laughs> He's basically the Eli Manning of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that was Jameis Winston. Had himself a decent day. Has he solidified himself as the starting quarterback the rest of the way? No. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I can't say it straight. (laughs) Right now, I think. Hey. (laughs) Tampa is going to rotate quarterbacks. Probably again the end of the season. By by the end of the season, Fitzpatrick will be the starter again. It's gonna be that bad. Tampa is just in a horrible spot, man. I said it three weeks ago. They should have kept Jameis on the bench, let him sit behind Fitzpatrick and learn. But they just in a weird spot. They they weren't gonna do it. They weren't make any noise, you know. But they won twenty seven to nine behind Winston. I mean, what? Do, what is the problem with that? He, he had a great game. He, he kind of shines above the rest. And when you look at his stats, I mean, the guy put out some of the best statistical categories of his season. He had 312 yards, two t- touchdowns, and this was the best stat of them all. Zero interceptions. He was 29 no. of 38. 38 passes with zero had- interceptions. That's like the best he's ever done in his whole career. He probably hasn't now, had zero interceptions for, since like an FCS opponent came to Florida State. 
<laughs> <laughs> hey, but thanks for propping up Jameis Winston. But they were playing the 49ers, man. Come on, bro. Like, let's just be real. It's the 49ers. That secondary has been suspect since the beginning of the season. So, of course, he's going to look good against the 49ers. Who they got left? Huh, we'll, we'll know next week if he's got it because they play the Panthers. <laughs> and then they got the Saints. Well, they have the a Ravens. tough schedule to play it out. They're four and seven. We're, they're not going to make any noise in the playoffs, and they're going to have to go up against the Panthers, the Saints, the Ravens, the Cowboys. We, we're not expecting what? them to beat. Did you two. say the Cowboys? Get yeah. out of here, man! They're, no. they're playing them. I'm not saying they're, they're, they're definitely going to win. Their division. Yeah, I they'll mean, probably they'll probably beat the Cowboys. The Cowboys no. have actually have won four straight. They won four beat the Cowboys. Cowboys, no. Cowboys suck, man. I don't give no. a crap. I don't want the Cowboys to win, but I'm being realistic here. The yeah. Cowboys have played Cowboys good suck. football. They have a good defense. They have a great running game. And Dak Prescott does just enough throwing the ball to Amari Cooper and the other guys to make that team win. And they've been, I, I hate to say it, but the Cowboys have turned the corner and they could be scary come down the, the stretch. So here. the we'll Cowboys see. have won three, the Cowboys have won three straight. It's been against the Eagles, the Falcons, and the Redskins. Be real. So the Super Be Bowl real. defending champion and the Eastern they suck the this year. East Division leaders. The, the, the Eagles are 4-5. and five. They suck this year. No doubt about it. The Falcons are what? The Falcons are 4-6. and six. They suck this year. The Redskins, sorry, Cal. Hey, you got a 6-5. and five. Hey, yeah, you guys won a couple of games this last time. <laughs> what did you expect? <laughs> Wait, I mean, teams you that have the only Cowboys won four games beat you like again? the Packers, they do suck. You're right. Bro, you let the oh, Cowboys beat you man. again. What is let wrong with you, man? Though. All Come three of those on. teams you all three of those teams you named far better than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. The Jameis Winston I'll will have to that. pull out a magic hat I, to win some of these games, but at least he had sure a good win against the 49ers. The Give him credit where it's due. I usually am a Jameis Winston hater, but he had a great game against, yeah, maybe it was a bad opponent, but still, the Bucks needed that. They're just looking for hope. Every time they switch out quarterbacks, they're just trying to find hope. And maybe Jameis Winston has finally given them a little bit of hope that they had in week one and week two when they were 2-0, and beating the Saints and putting up a ton of points. They finally got that back with a huge win, 27-9 over the 49ers. Give the man some credit. Okay, I'll give him credit. But let me, let me go ahead and say this. Is this Jameis Winston's last year? Is this his last contract year? Well, the, in the NFL, especially on, with a guy like that, they can extend him. They, he's still under contract, I believe, for one more year. Or they can cut him. They're not going to lose much if they cut him because it's that long rookie year, that four or yeah, five-year first contract. rookie contract. It, they're not missing out on much if they cut him. They really are in the driver's seat as an organization. They can extend them. Maybe they can do a one- or two-year extension with a lot of incentives. The NFL is smart about setting contracts up where they can get out of them if they want to, and that's what you, they'll do with Winston. You got They're all technical on me. You I, get all I, technical on me. Making a bold prediction, Jameis Winston and Fitzpatrick will not be quarterbacks in uh, Tampa Bay next year. Bold is that prediction. that bold of a prediction? Is that really that bold? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, thanks for calling your shot, but I mean... That's like me golfing and saying I'm going to land this ball somewhere in green grass. So I, I've looked oh, well, up. Well, think about it. it goes Who's in the water out, who and I'm wrong, out there? But 90 percent of the who time, who else it is green out there? Grass. Who else is out there that Tampa Bay could possibly pick up? There's not like a big name out there that they yeah, can say, "Hey, look, draft. we want that guy." Who's coming out of the draft, bro? There's always There's guys no. that come out of the draft. Like, were you a big Josh Allen follower last year when he was playing up in Wyoming? And like, these guys not. come out of the woodwork. When uh, Mitchell Trubisky came out of UNC, were you like, oh, my gosh, I watched all those UNC games. This guy looks like he's going to be the greatest ever. And then he comes I'll out and lights the world on fire in Chicago. Like, there no, are guys that come out of the, the woodwork but, that you may not even who, think about. So, so, either way, either way, they won't be quarterbacks in Tampa next year. Whoever it is probably won't have too much success because they're going to be working with a new coach anyway, so... Yeah, whatever. Let it ride. Yeah, so 
it's a four-year contract. It expires this year. There's a fifth-year option for the team. If the team takes that fifth-year option on Jameis Winston, Jameis Winston will look to make $20.9 million. Worth every penny. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's not bad. That's not bad. Jump change right there. No, I mean, that's almost his full four-year contract was $25 million. So that's nearly half or, uh, yeah, that's nearly his whole entire rookie contract would be mm -hmm. for one year. So I don't think he's worth $20 million right now. He is not, no. but I've seen backup quarterbacks like close. Mike McGlennon get like 15 to 16 oh, million. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I could see a team paying him $20 million easily. Well, guys, we're up against the commercial break. When we return, we will find out if two of the biggest names in UFC are ready to start hugging it out. And Loudbeard also, when we come back. Yes, go ahead, Chris America. This I got to tell you guys awesome. yours. I did. <laughs> Loudbeard. <laughs> I, I got to tell you guys something. When we come back, I, I got an announcement to make. I, I might be checking into rehab. Eh, I can see that happening. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. <sighs> 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Oh, guess who it is. Did you know the station had a janitor? Oh, yeah, the Hefe otherwise known as Beck, and it's Beck's Work Week in Review live on 12 Ounce Sports Radio every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Catch interviews, special guests, and the recap of the week's news and headlines and box scores and results. It's Beck's Work Week in Review live on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Scout team listeners and friends of the show, I've got something special for you. It looks like 12 Ounce Sports Radio has done it again. We have partnered with Rally House. You just go to the website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner on the right side of the page, and it will take you directly to Rally House. Rally House has some of the greatest, most unique sports items for that diehard fan, casual fan, and anybody and everybody out there that is special in your life. So go ahead and check it out. Once again, go to that website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner to the right of the page, and you will get taken to the best sports merchandise website on all of the interweb. Do you own a small business? Are you looking for solutions to all of your communications, problems, and challenges that you have? Check out Ring Central. Give them a call. They have partnered with 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Dot com to give you the best rates on all of your business and office solutions for communication. Give them a call today. We have a dedicated line for all of the 12 ounce sports radio listeners. It is 1 877 779 3860. You will get a representative on the phone who will help you with all of your small business communications needs. Once again, give them a call today. 1 877 779 3860. Yeah, welcome back. After a quick commercial break, we are back with Scout Team Sports. You're listening. It is Tuesday, November 27th. You listen to the Scout Team each and every morning, 6 a.m. and again at 11 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We're bringing it to you hot and live. You can catch our podcast after the show goes live. We drop it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and anywhere you can find a podcast, including our website, scoutteamradio.com. 
We also like to get social. If you want to hit us up on the Twitter machine, we are available at Scout Team Radio. We also are on Facebook and Instagram, again, at Scout Team Radio. But with all that being said, we're ready for a beautiful day in sunny, freezing cold Florida when we're bringing all the hot news to you. And Chris America teased that he's going to rehab and I think it's all those bonbons he sits on his couch and eats like Peggy Bundy. But maybe I could be confused. <laughs> maybe I could be surprised by what his actual addiction is. Chris America, what are you addicted to? What are you doing going back to rehab? Well, guys. Um, Wait, did he say going back to rehab? What was the well, first time? You, uh, it's a long story. Well, guys, I, I you know, normally I don't like talking about this on air, but I felt like I needed to. I needed to get this announcement. Um, I saw yesterday on Twitter that the rehab sports guys are officially back on Twelve Ounce Sports Radio oh. Airwaves. The Rehab Sports Network will feature KO Sports Talk and uh, other shows that will be named later. But the Rehab Sports guys are back, and I'm going back to rehab with them. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The KO show is the kicker and the outlaw. Great show over there. These guys do great work for 12 on Sports Radio, and we love being partnered up with them. They participate rehab, on rehab. our show, and they put on a great show of their own. Welcome back, Rehab Sports guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's going on? So you guys are going to go to rehab with me then? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Wow. Don't like no. going to rehab. We're all going to rehab, man. Try to get to go to rehab. I mean, I dude, like the rehab no, is like no, the pinnacle of no. our career, right? Like that's that means we made it, right? Yeah. I mean, we have. Uh, I'm just saying, like, uh, like sure. if you guys wake up one day and be like, you know, what, Anthony, you got to go to rehab. Be like, oh, I made it, man. I, I I made it. I'm I'm here. I've arrived. Mm, you've only truly arrived if it's on a VH1 reality show. Ooh, mm. Ooh like Who that that you got to be really old do, though like, to make the VH1 yeah. You do got to be old. Show. You don't want to be there yet. You want to be like rehab. Keith Richards had such a dark past. You're like, dude, he's no, old. dude. The... Oh, that was MTV Cribs. Yeah, MTV Cribs is young. VH1. <laughs> That's when the they go show. view their house. <laughs> That's nothing. That's not even close. It's a reality show. About? Oh, I thought it's you guys were talking about. Pimp, I thought you guys were talking about pimp my ride. Oh, oh dude, oh, I always love get rehab and pimp my ride mixed up. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. I never watched those VH1 rehab shows. Survivor. Uh, it was oh, the doctor. Soon. What was that doctor name? Was that famous doctor from uh, from that show about that adult thing? Oh, the Adam Carolla and Dr. Dr. Drew. Doctor Drew. That's who it was. Doctor Drew, Dr. yeah. Doctor Drew, he's got I never watched show. those. I watch, I watched clips, but I never like watched it. Like you guys watch that? Who wants to Maybe see somebody in a while, rehab? While you start channel surfing and you get sucked into the VH1 MTV reality cesspool, that was before Netflix. Though. It's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like you know how Netflix. like when you were trying to figure out which fan base you want to be a part of, and you got sucked into the FSU cesspool. It's kind of like that. Oh, bro, we're gonna fight. I don't know if anybody Live gets sucked into fight. that. You get you get knocked down, dragged, and beaten into FSU fandom. <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna fight. We're you know what? This is gonna be a big fight Saturday. It's gonna be between Chris America and the Golden Ghost. How about that? Well, All right. Beard, you talked about a big fight in UFC. Two juggernauts, two of the biggest names in UFC history, two UFC Hall of Famers. What happened this past weekend, Loudbeard? Uh, are you talking about our good friend Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz going at it? Two legends yes. and the UFC. Ice man. The Iceman. Uh, <laughs> Chuck It lasted and Tito. 30 That's seconds, funny. and Tito gets a good shot on Chuck, and he basically goes to sleep like it was nothing. I don't think Go these two sleep. old men should have been fighting. Go to sleep. This was an awful <laughs> <No>. fight, <laughs> but big names. This was People wanted to see this. People wanted to see the big names of Chuck Liddell, legends, Hall of Famers in UFC, Tito Ortiz. I mean, these guys are huge. This was the trilogy. This was their third fight, and the fight was a little disappointing, but it was fun to see Tito go out there and just knock Chuck Liddell out. Yes, yeah, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's his first victory over Chuck Liddell. Well, I don't know if that one should count. 
Yeah. <laughs> but when they were in their prime, Chuck Liddell beat the hell out of Tito Ortiz back yeah, in the day. Chuck, Chuck was a scary I mean, we're, dude, man. we're talking like 12 years ago. These two fought hmm. last. Maybe 2008. Wow. I feel like it was, it was longer than that. But that could have been like the end of that. It was like... The Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz rivalries when I first got into UFC. I actually came in late. I think I watched either their second or their third fight. Let me go ahead and pull them up real quick. It sounds and this like a was plan. The, this was the title fight. This was the big fight, the main event. No? But, it was just a big fight. I don't know. I mean, it I mean, wasn't, this wasn't even, even like the a UFC, huge... I don't think. No, this was a, an offshoot, but it was an MMA deal. Um, it was just a name game, you know? Like, you get two big names out there that are basically coming out of retirement. Tito Ortiz, after the fight, announces, he's like, I'm done now. Like, I've done what I needed to do. <laughs> I'm retired for good oh, yeah. this time. Don't <laughs> Nobody call me. Don't like, at this me. Was it. Don't, don't at me. At me. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> like, I don't want to do this again. Now, another big name that's going to be getting back to UFC, Anderson Silva announces that he will be back in February at UFC 234. That's a big name at the end of his prime, at the end of his career, that is ready to, I guess, hang him up. But he doesn't want to quite yet, so he's got one more fight left. Maybe. Maybe two more. I don't know. You excited yes. about the Silva fight, Chris America? <sighs> no. No, it's like, dude, just go. <laughs> well, so no, here's yeah. here's the thing about here's the thing about fighters, and you can say this about a lot of athletes. Uh, Michael Jordan being one of them as well. Kobe Bryant being one of them. These guys are so great at their sport, and Silva is no different than Kobe or Michael when it comes to his sport. I mean, I Silva is one of the most fun fighters I've ever seen. He was basically. You know, Jet Li and Muhammad Ali mixed into one. I remember when he fought Forrest Griffin, and he just toyed with him the whole time and just bobbed and weaved as Griffin just swung and missed over and over and over and over again. And then finally, Silva just kicked him in the face and knocked him out, and then Forrest Griffin tucktailed and ran out of the ring after the fight. Yes, that mm. did happen. But these guys, once they go over the, the edge, and for Silva is when he broke his leg. When his leg snapped in half, hmm. That yeah, was that the was downfall. That was a break, too. That was the downfall of, of Silva. And Tito Ortiz was also another one of those guys that he overextended his welcome. His last fight against Tito Ortiz, like I mentioned, was December 30th, 2006. He was 20-3 and three when that happened. His very next fight, he fought against the young up-and-coming Quentin Jackson. And Quentin Jackson beat the ever-living hell out of him. And from that Rampage. moment on... Hmm. Uh, from that moment on, you know, uh, Liddell only won one more fight since then, and he is now, with this loss to Tito Ortiz, he's now 21-9. and nine. So he went from 20-3 and three to 21-9. and nine. He overextended his stay. Quentin Jackson basically knocked him out of his career. And so you're si Silva. Anderson Silva now is like the Michael wow. Jordan on the Wizards, is what Anderson Silva yes, is. Yes, that's, that's what wow. I'm saying, yes. That is <laughs> okay. exactly I, what I'm saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, the other UFC yeah. news that I just wanted to, to go on real quick because we still got a ton of other stuff that we could talk about, but it looks like there's stories out there that Khabib may be ready to reconcile his relationship with Conor McGregor. These two huge superstars who just Beat were in the again? nastiest brawl are ready to hug it out. You buy this? Are you buying that these guys can make up and move on and be friends. I mean, is this like Rocky and Apollo Creed from the beginning and then becoming best friends? Can you see that happening with Khabib and Connor? I mean, Connor better hug it out. He don't want to get beat up again. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was too good to resist. <laughs> I, I see this like Dale Dobick. I see this like Dale Dobick <sighs> and Brennan Huff and Step Brothers, how they fought and fought and fought and fought, and then eventually... <laughs> They became best friends. I do, too. I think it's going to be good. Connor said to him when Khabib was all mad at him during the fight, he's like, now you're going to talk. He's like, man, this is just business. Connor does all of these shenanigans to build the brand. I don't think there's any like real personal beef here. I think they're going to say, you know what? It, 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 water under the bridge. It is what it is. Let's hug it out. Let's move on. 
I can see them moving on and in, hugging it out. In, in fact, I pitched this $100 million idea, deal. I think that they need to do a movie about these two fighters, about their rivalry, and it should star John C. Riley and Will Ferrell playing Khabib <laughs> and Conor McGregor. <laughs> I would pay top dollar to go Cal's see that about, movie. Hey, you're talking about Cal's idol here. He's not having now, it right now. now. No, I would love who to would, see that. Who would you cast as? As Connor, Connor would, would be, be Will John Ferrell. John C. Riley or Will Ferrell? No, Connor's going to be Will oh, Ferrell. John dude. C. Riley would be Habib. Habib. <laughs> <laughs> no I think it would be great. I think it would be great, too. All hey, right, so Will Ferrell, have your people call my people. We'll get this, we'll get this script written out. Chris America knows his movies. Now, moving on from the UFC, there are... Two other juggernauts that are re- ready to hug it out, and that would be UNC football and Mac Brown. Mac Brown returning after a long hiatus where he coached Texas and he had a few years off. Now that he is old as dirt, UNC football is ready to bring him back after they parted ways with Larry Fedora. Is this a good move for the UNC football program, gentlemen? I think it's a great move because I think – it's just another bigger name in football coaching in the ACC that's bigger than Willie Taggart. <laughs> Ooh. Bro. Bro. The Wait, road became there, that man. much harder for the FSU Seminoles. Mm, I don't think so. I like Mac. Uh, I, don't, I don't have anything against Mac. It's just going to be weird seeing him in North Carolina blue, but – well, what's weird is that he it. was there for 10 years, and I never knew that. <laughs> like, he, he, was there the before, he was there for almost a decade before he went to Texas. But, I mean, that yeah. was in our younger, younger yeah, age. Yeah, we were kids. That's why we, yeah, like, yeah, nobody's we paying attention we to pay UNC attention. football. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. a powerhouse program. So, it's not a powerhouse. I don't think it ever truly will be. Mac Brown is up there. How how old is Mac? Mac got to be hitting. I think they said he would be 86 years old when the season starts. <laughs> no, is he really? Th- no, come I on. I believe man. so. Don't, no, no, look it up here. I'm telling you, I got it written do down here I'm down. off of memory. He'll be right. 68 years old August. Maybe I come flipped on, him man. around. Did I say 86? You, you did say 86. Son of a- <laughs> He's 67 hey, now. His birthday is Dyslexia August 20th. Dyslexia is a real problem here. Hey, his birthday is I, August 27th. And I'm 27th. sorry about that, but it's I funny because it you have wrong. it. Make sure you write that down. We'll send him a gift from Scout Team Sports. 68, hey. 86, that's the same age, man. We'll send him a card that says, Happy 86th birthday, Coach Mac. <laughs> I really think we should. Give me a card for dyslexia. I honestly day. think we should do that. Just you give me a card for dyslexia day. I, I think I need something, man. I need we some love here. You guys are hurting my feelings. Hold, oh, you really man. need to write this down. I'm and over send here him dying. a happy 86th birthday. <laughs> Come next talk. I'm over here dying. Hey, oh, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> oh man, it takes we'll get, years. We'll to get him a. Fl- we'll get him a five dollar <laughs> gift card to like uh, to like. What would be good? Like like Perkins. Or would it be like uh, Golden Bob Corral? Evans. Golden, Golden Bob Corral. Evans. There you go. The jam. Five dollar gift old card. Old people love Golden Corral. That's it. We're getting him a five dollar <laughs> gift card to Golden Corral and a birthday card that says "Happy 86th Birthday, Coach Mac." We're gonna put it on an envelope, fill it out to the athletic department, and send it on over. Golden mm. Corral is some of the nastiest food out there, except if they're gonna sponsor us. So if you're gonna sponsor us, it's great food i love but how listen. the kids all put their hands in the chocolate fountain and i'm like oh people are eating that Ooh, <laughs> I want some of that. Uh. he's gonna get he's gonna get this card and he, like i think the fact that he has no idea why or what the troll is in <laughs> reference to <laughs> oh he's man. Gonna be like i don't get it uh, i don't really get it yeah hey look mac it takes years to build a football program he's 68 when or the season 86. starts I can't remember which one it really is. Do you really think he's going to be around 10 years at North Carolina? I mean, 10 more years at UNC? I don't, I don't, I don't think that's possible. Who, who, who do we have with us UNC fan? Oh, T. Oh, Biggs, I have a right? question for you. Golden Ghost, who will be at their program longer? Willie Taggart or Willie Taggart. Mac Brown? Willie oh, Taggart. You're, you're ride or die, huh? This is ride, or, ride die. or die. Flo- um, Come on, man! Florida State has a history of the ride. 
Florida State has a history of keeping their coaches longer. I, until our track record says different, that's what I'm going with. We keep what, our coaches for a while. Now, so. I would keep a coach for about 36 years until they don't make a bowl. <laughs> I, I have some breaking news. Until guys. 86 years old. Breaking news. Do, 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 do. Oh, man. I, I take my journalism uh, hat seriously here at Scout Team Sports. I dive <laughs> deep. I dig deeper into the story. I've been combing through Mac Brown's resume. I don't even know if Anthony Mack knows this, but – Brown's first experience as a coach came as a student at FSU. He was a student coach of wide receivers at FSU. Will Mac Brown be the next head coach after Willie Taggart's fired in two years? The answer is as, no. As, as a Florida Taggart's State alum, two more I, years. I didn't know oh, he wow. went to Florida State. I didn't know he. I didn't think he graduated from Florida State. Though. I don't know if he graduated there, but he was a student coach there. Not too many people graduate. Yeah. From uh, he State. held that position from '73 and '74. <laughs> And then he so, left and became a wide receiver coach at Southern Miss. So check this out. Willie yeah, Tigers is not going to be gone in two years because our record says otherwise. That's the Florida Gators records. How many years? How many coaches did in the last 12 years? Thank you. Mac Brown is 68 years old. He's going to be at UNC for the next five. What was his contract? Five years, I think. No, I don't know. It doesn't I, matter. I, I, contracts so, are so subjective. What do we, what do we look yeah, like? Well, like real journalists not, who dig deep into these things? Not not until they're guaranteed. Why do you guaranteed. ask us these questions on air? Why don't you do saying, the research? Not, I, I brought not to the table. Guaranteed. Goes, I brought listen, to the table now, that listen. he was a wide receiver coach from FSU. What are you bringing? I'm bringing that I like Mac Brown. You're the guy like who comes him. to Thanksgiving dinner with red solo cups. Hey guys, no. I brought the cups. Nope, I'm the guy that comes with the drunken ham. But that's a story for another day. Uh, look. He's not going to be around in UNC much longer than Willie well, no, Taggart being gonna at Florida his, State. He's yeah. going to go back to his alma mater. He's going to go back not to where true. he started at FSU. I like that. Mac it's, Brown versus Dan Mullen rivalry weekend. I like that. Doesn't that not this, have a ring this, to it, Ladbeard? This is, this is fake nice news. This it. is fake news. It's fake now, news. Hell, he might. Texas Tech also parts ways with their coach. Could Willie T be the next Cliff Kingsbury on the unemployment line of college coaches. Not, hey, not listen, this year. I've, I actually said that I want to test this tech job. That'll be an awesome job for me. I, I, I'm throwing my name in the hat for that. <laughs> you guys want to join me? No, I'm not going to Lubbock, hey. Texas. Dude, hmm. Texas is fun. I'd I'm like to saying. see a Golden Ghost with a cowboy hat on, Texas. Uh, you got to live boots, the buddy. role, man. They, they hey, like guys, Texans it's the Golden Texas. Ghost. <laughs> it's the Golden Ghost, boys. Yeehaw. <laughs> Get tired and light fires. Let's, Let's do see. it. So, so Lubbock, Texas, is up kind of in that little northern panhandle that uh, Texas has. And let's see how many people are in Lubbock, Texas. I think it's a fairly decent sized it's city. In Texas, though. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's two hundred fifty-eight thousand right? people. Yeah, that's no, bad. that's <laughs> not like a small, small town. <laughs> I was thinking it. Well, because College Station, where Texas A and M is, is really small. It yeah. is. It's not huge. Yeah, I agree. But mm. it's in Texas, so it doesn't really matter. And Texas Tech is a good – I mean, it could be a decent program, man. I, the next coach is going to have some fun up there. Hopefully they find some young, youthful guy that can get that offense back right. So I'm down with it. It was named after Thomas Soltis Lubbock, former Ooh, Texas that's, Ranger. That's good reporting right there. You are I'm the Ooh, not a walker, Texas Ranger. Master of your I'm, domain. I'm naming my next kid Saltus. You should. You Saltus, should. Texas hey, I wanted Ranger. to apologize to our listeners. We didn't talk anything about the NBA, and that was on purpose because last <laughs> night our Orlando Magic, they got beat by the Warriors, and we don't want to talk about how Kevin Durant scored 49 points on our Orlando Magic. We don't want to talk about that was a season high for Kevin Durant, and we don't want to talk about how the Warriors look like they are coming back with vengeance against our Orlando Magic, because none of that is important information that we I, need I, to cover on well, a sports show. I, I think our Orlando Magic saw the, <laughs> the competition coming in. They're like, ah, oh, this is an easy team. We can rest our starters. And sometimes when you do that, it bites you in the butt, you know? So we were resting our starters yeah. against a crappy team. That's what happened. It's, the, it's a long season. The, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, Loudbeard. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. It is a marathon. We're, 
we just wanted to let the Warriors know that we're still here. We're going to give them, we're going to throw them a bone. They had their longest losing streak of the Steve Kerr era just happen, and we needed them to, to bust out of their rut, so we gave them a chance. We just want them to know that they should trade us Kevin Durant just for what we did for them. <laughs> okay, sure. I guess it's the magic. Yeah. Stay tuned for tomorrow's show. We are done, gentlemen. We are going to have a great show tomorrow. Will or will not the Golden Ghost show up for tomorrow's episode? Stay tuned to find Ooh. out. Hey, did anybody talk about Dwight Howard yet? No, no. no. That, that's that's going down a, a Dude, road I don't know I want to no, talk no, about. No, we, no, talk we about gotta it talk about it because it's wrong. It's yeah, we'll 2018. Talk about it yeah. People need to be who they are. Yeah, I, I agree. That's, That's what I'm saying. saying. I don't want to get into it. A lot of people have been slandering the guy. Come on. Let him be himself. All right. Let it ride.